All right, good afternoon. My name is Nate. I am the communication specialist at UMFS. Thank you all for joining us for UMFS Live. We are working out some connection issues here with our guest for today, so just bear with us one minute. Should be joined here shortly by Miss Powell, outstanding direct care staff at our child and family. <laughs> there you are. I just introducing you, Miss Powell, saying that you're one of our uh, outstanding direct care staff at our child and family healing center. And I was just walking through. You and I had a little connection issue, but I think we're all squared away now. Yes. Well, good. I can't thank you enough for being here today, Miss Powell. Thank you for joining us again. My name's Nate. This is UMFS Live. We're here every week on Instagram Live. I'll dive right in for you. Appreciate you joining us today. Uh, tell me, Miss Powell, how long have you been? at the Child and Family Healing Center, and what brought you to UMFS? I've been here a whole seven years and four months. <laughs> um, I heard a lot about UMFS, um, just, you know, searching around about different, you know, agencies um, before coming in. Um, I did a little research, um, and I also talked to several um, friends and colleagues, and they just said wonderful, wonderful, wonderful things about UMFS. And I said, I have to apply. <laughs> I have to apply. So I applied and it took a little long. Um, and I just wanted to go into a different field because I was in another setting and I wanted to go into a different field. And when they called me, I was just um, excited and just came right on in. <laughs> well, I just I, wanted to be in a, a family. Yeah, it was. A, a family setting. Definitely. Well, I'm glad to hear that. And we're so happy to have you in and, and, and doing some research, preparing for this interview with you. I asked uh, around and people just spoke so highly of you. You and I had a chance to talk the other day for a few minutes as we were getting ready for this interview. So we're so glad you're here and congratulations on seven plus years, which is an amazing accomplishment in any field. You mentioned it briefly. Um, I wonder if you can expand on it. What line of work did you have before coming to CFHC? Had you worked with youth before? I've worked with youth before. Um, I first started out in the public school system um, and I worked as a one-to-one -one with autism and autism and I did that for six years um, and then I switched over and I became a um, youth counselor um, a, a day treatment counselor. And I worked in the school as well, but I worked with um, at-risk youth in the school um, and became one-to-one. Uh, -one. Well, I became a day treatment counselor and I had six clients. And, um, and then I wanted to just move over and try something new in a different setting. Um, so I wanted to try residential and I said, well, let's go try this somewhere else different. Um, and then I applied, not thinking that when I applied, I would apply and be here seven and a half years later almost, but I'm happy. I'm glad. Well, and we're happy too. In seven years, seven and a half years, that's an accomplishment anywhere, um, especially true when working in, in a direct care setting in a residential program. Can you talk about what keeps you coming back? The, the kids. And I also just like the hominess and the, you know, the family setting. And I like that the kids like that I keep coming back. And I like that the kids like that I'm not giving up on them. We can have tough days. We can have hard days. Um, it can just be like stressful for both of us. But for them to know that I'm going to be coming back the next day and I didn't give up on them, you know, it means a lot. Um, and if I can come in and do my job and, you know, see some milestones coming or, you know, just see some progress, at least for the day, then I'm going to come back. And I also just leave knowing that the next day is a new day and we can start over again um, and try it again. So. You know, you talked a little bit just now about each day being a new day. And I wonder if you can explain a little bit about how it is you're able to build those connections with these young people. What, what does it take to build a relationship with a young person who, who might need uh, residential treatment? It takes, for me, I feel like that it takes listening and trust. Because a lot of the 
residents, they don't feel that people actually listen to them. They feel like they actually, you know, they listen, but they don't hear them. So I'm listening and hearing at the same time. Um, they can go back at any time and ask me any questions about whatever it is that they discuss with me. And I'm going to remember and I'm going to know because I'm actually listening to them. So I kind of just take me out of the equation and I put them in the equation. And I want to, you know, get down and know them, even if it's just playing a game with them and just processing with them and try to take that mind off, you know, being so anxious um, just to be able to, you know, just talk to me. A lot of kids said I'm like the mom. So they're able to talk to me. Um, at first they're scared, but I have to smooth them over and I'm not upset, you know, let's just talk about this. And then they're just, you know, eventually they just start spilling everything and just start talking and i'm like okay oh no slow down we're gonna get to this and i just let them know that i they have my attention right now everything else is put aside they have my attention talk let's try to solve this i'm not gonna solve this you're gonna solve this i'm gonna help you but you're gonna solve this and they just feel that i care about them and I really do generally care about what happens and care about them. So I just, I allow them to know. And I let them know up front, you know, we're going to talk about this, you know, and you're going to be okay after this, after we talk about it, but we're going to talk about this. So, and I'm going to expect you to take responsibility for whatever it is that it may be. So with me, they know that, if they talk about it with me, it's fine, but some responsibility has to come in. And generally they come back and they um, they thank me or, you know, they don't want to talk unless I'm around or unless I'm coming back around because they feel comfortable only talking to me. So, um, I, you know, I do what I can and I just make sure that they are heard and that's the most important thing to me is they are heard because I know that you don't want anyone to talk to you and speak to you and then they listen but they don't really hear you so well, that, that level of engagement and that that ability to build trust and nurture a relationship with a young person who may have had reasons to have trust issues before is so amazing. And that's something that you and your entire team at CFHC do so well. Um, I know that I see it when I'm on campus. I've talked about that several times on this program, just when I can step back and observe all the good work that's being done, you can see it's really impacting in a very positive way, the, the young people that we serve. And I wonder if you can talk for a moment then a little bit more about your team.